What's Gucci everyone, it's AJ here again, and today I'm trying to mix up the content I'm delivering to you guys, and make a little drawing interactive video, well, it's not really interactive, it's interactive with me, but not really interactive with you guys, but thank you for tuning in anyway. And in this video, I want to talk about Git stashing, or another way to, a way to fix kind of maybe a common Git problem that sometimes can come up. Now the thing about git is that if you know how to do, you know, the standard commands, things can usually go pretty well. If you know how to merge and branch, things can go pretty well. But when you get into hairy situations, you may have to use all these commands you don't know and you get frustrated and again you want to tear off bodily limbs. But that's what we're here for. We're here to learn the git commands to easily fix those things. So now I'm going to drum up a situation for you guys. So let's say I've got a branch here. And now you guys are submitted to my drawing skills. And we're going to call that the master branch. And so off this master branch, you know, um, the master branch isn't more important than any other branch. It's just a branch. It's just the first branch that's created. And so off this branch, I'm going to create another branch. And so we'll just call it branch one, which is exactly in the example. I'm going to show you what it's called. So we, I'm, I've got branch one here. And so I've just got master and branch one. And let's say on the master branch, I start making a document called b.txt. And that looks terrible. So I've got b.txt. And within b.txt, you know, I start writing on my changes and I start trying to write the new, new Harry Potter. But then I realize that I'm being a, I realized midway through or at the very end of my um, b.txt when I'm ready to commit is that I'm not supposed to commit anything to the master. My, only my boss can merge things in the master. And what I actually should have been doing is I should have taken b.txt and I should have been editing that on branch one and then committing to branch one. So I should have been doing everything on branch one is what I'm trying to say, but I was accidentally on the wrong branch. And so what I, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to um, t store the changes I made in my master branch so I don't lose them. I want to store them, revert the master branch back to the way it was, and then go to branch one and reapply those changes to branch one so then I can commit it. And that's what we're going to learn to do. And we can do this with git stash. And what it does is it's pretty cool. What it does is it takes all localized changes them and puts them in a repository and puts them in a log that's not like the git log but puts them in a kind of local log that you can keep track of and apply these changes to repositories. And so we're going to do this with the terminal here. So as you can see here, here I have a project and it's an example and I'm in the master branch as you can see by the purple here and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a b.txt like I showed you guys and I'm going to say this is a text document and there we go I've got this is a text document and now and now so if I do git status hopefully it will say a uh, new file b.txt and I modified it so the first thing I have to do for git stash to work is I need to add it to the indexing area by adding it, and this is how so Git knows about it. If I don't add it to the indexing error, Git doesn't know about it, and if Git doesn't know about it, I can't run any Git commands on it, aka I can't run Git stash. So now I've created b.txt and I've done my work on it, but I realize, oh hey, this is the wrong branch, so then I can do git stash. And what git stash will do is it save the working directory in index state on, mat on a commit change. And so now if I do git stash list, then, sorry, if I do git stash list, what's really cool is that whenever I type in git stash, it will put it in kind of this stash list, which is all the different types of stashes I just made. And whenever you type in git stash, it becomes the most recent stash, so stash zero. And so what's really cool about that is that I can save as many stashes as I want and then apply them when I want to. And so... Um, what you see is you see stash at curly brace, the curly braces, and there's zero, one, or two between them. Those are the, ch those are the kind of IDs you want to apply the stashes to. So now let me change to branch one here, branch one. And so now I'm going to do git stash apply. And I'm going to apply this stash 
And what that is going to do is it's going to it's going to take those changes that I stashed up, the most recent stash, and apply it. So now, even though I didn't have, now if I do sub, cat b.txt, it says this is a text document. Cat shows you the contents of a file. And so now b. B, cat b.txt, that shows me this is a text document. So I was able, as you can see above, to apply the changes I made in master to the changes I made in branch one without changing master. So now I can get, um, add, so now I can do git status, and then I can do git, so I can do git commit, you know, am added b.txt, and then it says, you know, one file change, one insertion, create mode b.txt. So I was able to do that, so I was able to commit that, that's awesome. And then if I do git checkout master, and then I do cat b.txt, no such file directory. So literally by doing stash, it took all my changes, reverted master for me, stashed them up so then I could reapply them to another branch, and now master is untouched. I didn't mess that up, and I was able to quickly change, um, put my material over to another branch, so now my boss doesn't know that I messed up. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. hope it's not too long. Let me know if you like what I'm doing, if you like anything I'm doing, or if you're just having a fun time watching. See you guys later.